in my band. Keller Price with Healthy Fit. Welcome to our stretch mobility and recovery class. Today is a foot and ankle focus. We are using our Rolga today. You can use any foam roller if you don't have this specific one. Our activator ball or any hard ball like a lacrosse ball, tennis ball, racquetball would work. Um, if you have the small squishy massage balls, you can use that. And your resistance band. If you're using a band that does not have this uh, fabric coating like the Slastics, check your band for rips or tears before we start our workout. They do, um, over time, can get rips or tears in them that you would want to discontinue use. So we're going to start with some self myofascial release on our feet. And you can do this either from a seated position or on the floor. Now, if you're not, if you don't have any kind of ball handy like this, we can use our thumbs in an X pattern, starting at the heel or use your um, activator, press, quarter turn and release using the pressure that feels good to you today. Okay. <laughs> so our feet are so important as the first point in the kinetic chain. And so we want to have uh, nice, flexible feet that have good proprioception or good perception of where we're at on the floor so that they can read and help us balance so we don't fall. All right, take your foot flat. If you have your soft massage balls, use them in a circular motion or use your fingertips in a circular motion on the top of your foot and around the ankle. So I did a Spartan this weekend. I did a cycling event on Saturday and a Spartan on Sunday. And the Spartan is an obstacle course race that you use at your feet a lot in the climbing, <laughs> climbing over obstacles. And on Sunday, I was just, well, I felt really good after the race. I was walking around, taking care of my animals. And I was outside and I was walking. And all of a sudden, I got this terrible pain in my foot. And I, it hurt so bad, I thought I twisted my ankle just walking. But I stretched some, I let it rest for a little bit. And I stretched, it was foot tightness that was causing so much pain that I could barely walk. So we, we never need to, don't ever discount stretching out your feet. Um, if you get foot cramps, it can make it very difficult to be mobile. Let's move on to our calves now with the activator press, quarter turn and release, working all along the back of the calves. If you feel any specific tightness, I have a couple tight areas on this calf here. When I feel that tightness, I'm going to place the ball or the activator in that spot and just rest on it. I can rock my leg side to side a little bit to try to release it, maybe front to back. Yeah. This is where it gets a little tricky if you don't have the activator doing this movement because our lacrosse ball doesn't have the finger holds on the side of it your ball can get away from you get that massage going All right, let's do the other foot. Starting with the bottom of the foot using your activator. Again, I like the textured side, or we use our thumbs. We wanna get rid of that 
that tightness. In addition to getting pains in your foot like I did the other day, um, you can also get plantar fasciitis from having tight feet. It can cause calf problems. And because they're the first point in the kinetic chain, tightness in your feet can cause pain in your knees, your hips, your low back, all the way up to your neck. Wow. Because everything, your fascia tissue is an interconnected web. And if there's uh, stuck tissue, it's like Velcro, it inhibits your movement. Your fascia tissue is supposed to be able to slide and move. And if it's too tight, it doesn't do that. All right, moving to the top of the foot. Again, using your fingertips or your small ball to massage out the foot and the ankle. Um, it was a crazy kicker 100, so it was up to 100 miles. It was a beautiful day for cycling, though. Beautiful day. All right, so let's move on to the calves now, again, with the activator ball. Or if you don't have the ball, use your hands to massage and squeeze the tight tissue here. Working your way around the back of the calf. Again, if you have a tight area, you can place your ball under that area on the calf and just press, allow the weight of your calf, roll it side to side. Or front to back. Let's um, use our activator, or our Rolga now, and our feet, or our ankles, starting at our ankles, our legs are going to go in these outside valleys. You can do this on the wall with mini squats or do it on the floor. Starting again at the ankles, from a seated position, your hands are beside you, supporting you. You're going to scoot up towards your knee stopping below the back of the knee and then roll it back and forward and back You can also cross one leg over so that you have a little bit more pressure on the calf, pointing and flexing the toe. Play around with that a little bit to see what feels good. Everyone's going to have a little bit more tightness in one area than the other. Everybody's different because of your gait and how you move and the activities that you do. 
All right. Let's come to a standing position. Stretching out our feet a little bit more. Take your foot on the top of your roga. Roll it back and forth. And then hold it in a calf stretch right here. And on the other side, back and forth. And then hold the calf stretch. Set that aside now. Let's do some foot fitness drills. Lift, spread those toes. Lower them on the mat and grip. At this point, you should feel even pressure in your heel, the balls of your foot, and each one of your toes. Lift, spread, and lower. Trying to give those toes some space, improving your balance in your feet. Mm -hmm. Let's lift that big toe up, lift and lower. And then try to lift up that little piggy toe. That one's a little bit harder. Rocking inside and outside. Getting a gentle stretch in the ankles as we rock. All right, ankle circles. So you can hold on to your chair here if you need. Floating the foot or just gently placing your toes on the floor. We're not really putting any pressure on the foot. That's why I said you don't have to touch your foot on the ground. We want to make nice little circles here. Okay. And other direction. And if you notice any tightness, that would be something that you could review and go back and address a little bit more later. Or if you're doing this workout on the replay, you can pause here. Do a little bit more release like we did with our fingertips or the massage balls around the ankle to try to get that loosened up. Other side. And switch. Spreading your toes for the balance. All right. Moving into our first sun salutation. Now we'll be working into our recovery and our mobility exercises to help improve our range of motion, reduce pain, and have better performance. So from a standing position, if you're not getting down on the ground, planking right here on your chair, we'll push back into down dog for our stretch, bending those knees right and left, and then moving into heel lifts, pressing your toes into the ground, lifting your heels off. Otherwise, you can join me on the floor for kneeling or toe options. Big inhale up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift, shoulders back. Exhale, step it out to plank on your chair, on your knees, or on your toes. Nice long line through the spine here. Your hands are stacked under your shoulders. Soft elbows, looking out in front of your hands or in front of the chair. Now push back into your down dog. Pressing your heels towards the floor. Feel that good stretch in your shoulders. My back's a little tight so I can feel it in my back as well. Bend those knees right and left. Right and left. Keep it going right and left. Heel lifts, pressing your toes into the floor, lift and lower, lift and lower. So when you lower, you're stretching your ankle, pushing through your heels. When you press off, you're stretching and pressing your toes into the floor. Walk it back. 
and roll it up. Big shoulder roll. Moving into a tight rope walk. So we're gonna imagine we're on a tight rope, engaging our core. When we do this, we're gonna cross our leg in front, heel toe, heel toe. And then back, toe heel, toe heel. So one of the challenges I have for you is to use your proprioception and allow your feet to center you using your core so that you're not looking down at your feet if you can. Okay. Again, heel toe to the front, heel toe, heel toe, nice tall posture. And then when you get to the front of your space, reverse, toe heel, toe heel, toe heel. All right, moving into our next sun salutation. If you're not getting down on the floor, we'll be sun salutation on our chair, and we'll go into a high lunge to the outside of the chair. From here, we'll sink down, and we're gonna push your knee over the front of your toe for that ankle stretch. All right, we also have the floor option. Here we go. Everyone, big inhale up. Exhale, forward fold. Allow your head to drop. Relax. Let's hold it here just for a quick stretch. Exhale. Inhale, half lift. Hands on your thighs. Exhale. Step it out to plank. On your toes, on your knees, or on your chair. Step wide to the outside of your feet. Again, you can be on your knee. You can be up on your chair or on your toes. Sink down into that stretch. Let's press that knee towards the front, in front of your toe, keeping your heel on the ground, whether you're on the, in the standing position or on the floor. And lunge it back, forward, pressing forward, and back. All right, other side. Step back into your plank, step wide. Again, you have the option of on your chair, on your knee, pressing forward. So in addition to working your shoulder, it's also working your hip a little bit here, hip flexor, but we wanna push the knee out in front of the toe, if we can, to get that good ankle mobility. And back, forward. And back, forward, and back. And come back to your plank, walk it back, and roll it up. Moving into our next recovery exercise. Sumo squat with heel raises. So you have the option of facing your chair for these, for balance or using it from the side. Take your feet out nice and wide here. So as we bend down, our knees and our toes are going to the outside. Our ch chest is up nice and tall. Sink down into your sumo squat. Heel raise, single, single, then double. Come on up. Let's do that again. Sink down into it. You can use your chair as balance. Single, single, lifting one heel up at a time, then lift up both heels. Pressing into your toes like we did in our um, sun salutation. Sink down. Single. Single. Double. Press it up. Two more, just like that. Can you get a little bit lower in that sumo squat? Keep your chest up nice and tall. Last one right here. Single. Single. Double and stand. What? I keep forgetting to do double heels. Oh, those doubles are tricky. So if you need practice on those, you always have the option of doing this over the chair. Sink down into your sumo squat here and then really focus on press, press, both press. You can also use weights on your legs when you do it from a seated position. 
All right, sit to stand, foot activation. So come to your chair. We want to have our sits bones evenly placed. I'm at the front of my chair. We're not leaning back, lounging. Feet are shoulder width apart here. Core engage. If you're having trouble with your knees crashing in when we do this, you can always use a ball or a pillow between your legs to activate your inner thighs as we do this. So just like we did in our foot fitness drill, we're gonna lift and spread our toes and then grip them down, activate your feet, find that even balance, engage your core, pressing through your feet, squeeze your thighs, stand up and control it coming down, lift, spread, lower and grip, Activate that foot quadruped, squeezing in the ball, and stand. Control it using your core coming down. Lift, spread, grip, and stand, and lower. Lift, spread those toes out nice and wide. Grip the mat. Get that even pressure. Squeeze the ball and stand. Let's do one more. Lift, spread, grip, and stand. And lower it back down. All right, set that ball aside if you use that. Moving into our next mobility exercise. Step through lunges, forward and reverse. If you're using your chair for balance, you're gonna start right next to your chair. Step to the front, lunge. Tap or float the leg, step to the back, and lunge. If you don't need the chair for balance, don't use it. Step forward, lunge, your feet are parallel. Tap or float the leg, step back. So if you're forcing yourself to float the leg or lifting the leg up for a hot second here, you're working on that balance, you're working on that foot activation, spreading those toes out. Yes? So even if you tap down first, get your balance, lift that knee up, and then step it back. Again, your feet should be parallel like train tracks. Coming down, knees in alignment with toes. Drive that knee up. Step forward and lunge. Tap or float the leg. Drive it up and back. Couple more. I'm just rotating to the other side so you can see from a different angle. The lower you go, oh, I don't have enough space here. The lower you go in your lunge, the more work on your quads. Let's switch to the other side. Other leg, step forward, lunge it down. Knees in line with toes, step, lift that leg up, engage the core, and reverse. My foot is really sweaty. We'll use the mat. Tap and back. Lift and lunge. If you're tapping your knee down, make sure you're doing it gently. We don't want to hurt the kneecap. Last one. All right, single leg balance squats. Using your chair for balance here as needed. I'm gonna bring mine up here. Our standing leg, spread those toes like we did in our foot activation. Activate the ball of the foot and the heel. This other foot you can either kick stand or you can float the leg. So what we're doing here is bend the knee into your squat, pressing up. Bend the knee into the squat and stand. Five on each side. So we're not doing a huge amount of these. Again, we are working the quad a little bit, but the focus here is the core activation and the balance and proprioception and how your foot is calculating and reading the floor. 
This is also good for your ankle mobility. My ankle's making all kinds of fun sounds over here right now. <laughs> but again, ankle mobility as we age gets more limited. We're gonna switch to the other side. So it's important to loosen it up regularly and practice mobility work so that if you miss a curb or trip over something that you don't end up spraining your ankle or breaking a bone. All right, spread the toes. Find that activation in that foot. Engage the core. You can kickstand the toe as you do your squats. Again, light pressure if you're kickstanding the toe or float that leg. And up. Finding your balance. If you need to tap down your foot like I did, go ahead and do that and reset. That was your last one. All right, finishing with a sun salutation. Again, if you're not getting down the floor, we're planking on our chair, stepping wide to the outside of our chair, rotate and reach here, and then we'll go into a hip flexor stretch. So you'll face your chair and sink down into the stretch. All right, here we go. Everyone, take a big inhale up for me. Exhale, fully exhale all the way down below your belly button. Inhale, half lift, shoulders back. Exhale, step it out to plank on your chair, on your knees or on your toes. Core is engaged. Step wide to the outside of your hand or your chair. Again, you can be on your knee here if you're on the floor or on the toe. Sinking down into that stretch, we wanna feel it on the outside of the leg. Rotate and reach. A good spinal stretch here. We should also be feeling in this movement, our back foot stretching. If you're on the floor, drop to your knee. As we press, reach those arms forward in the hip flexor stretch. Standing option right here. One more stretch. Press your hips to the front of your space. Back into our plank. On the chair, on our knees, or on our toes. Step wide to the other side. Again, rotate and reach. Kneeling option, toe option, chair standing option. Drop down to your knee, reach your arms up, hip flexor stretch, and lower. Pressing to the front. Again, chair options right here. You should be feeling in that hip flexor, yes? Yeah. Oh, yeah. One more. And step it in. I hope that your feet and ankles feel nice and loose and limber. You have better proprioception now in your feet. This will help with your recovery in your next workout and just even in your daily movement activities. Don't forget to tag me in your stretching selfie at Kella Price at Healthy Fitness Life Coach. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at SMR Stretch. If you're watching this video on the replay on our channel, please leave a comment about what you thought was your favorite exercise or how it benefited you today. Thanks for joining me. Stay flexible and injury free.